Disney live action remakes and spin offs and sequels and prequels. It's also. It's all so much. Don't get me wrong, this new ish endeavor that Disney has decided to bank on has not been all bad. The Beauty and the Beast remake was mostly inoffensive, Tim Burton's Alice in Wonderland had some entertainingly wacky stuff in it, Cinderella had uh, plenty of things, all of which I could name right now. Um, let's go with Kate Blanchett for the sake of there's no other things. Look, I'm well aware that these new Disney reboots aren't exactly a new thing. The Mouse House has been milking its own properties for a long time, whether it's through pointless straight-to-video animated sequels or live-action remakes in the 90s like 101 and 102 Dalmatians, and because one Dalmatian live-action remake, a sequel to that, along with an animated spin-off and a TV series wasn't quite enough, here we have Cruella, a prequel movie focusing on the 101 Dalmatians iconic villain Cruella de Vil, this time played by Emma Stone. Now I know what you're thinking, and I thought the same thing. Why? Just why? Money. It's, it's money. The 101 Dalmatians movie from the 90s was a success at the box office, but really, Let's face it, this was a B-list film that just happened to have an S-tier villain. Glenn Close was just perfection as Cruella de Vil, and even though she is relegated by the end of that film to a bumbling buffoon stuck in, in some kind of Home Alone nightmare, her performance was hilarious and hugely memorable, so it's obvious why Disney would pick out that character to spin off, especially after Maleficent also did pretty well. But without Glenn Close, this was something of a gamble. Could the younger Emma Stone really pull off a classically evil role like Cruella de Vil? I'll be honest, I was really not looking forward to this movie. Like, the trailers looked alright, but I was just not ready to, like, jump into another Maleficent where it just, like, completely destroys, like, the original story, changes everything, and then sugarcoats the villain so that, you know what, maybe they weren't all that bad to begin with. Not quite as evil as we thought. My take on it is you don't need to explain why these villains are evil. We know, it's in the original movies. Captain Hook hates Peter Pan because his literal hand is gone because of him. Jafar hates Aladdin because he's interfering with his power hungry plans. Ursula is salty about getting kicked out of the underwater kingdom and frankly, manipulating someone like Ariel is so friggin easy, why wouldn't she do it? And we don't need to feel sympathy for them necessarily, we understand them already and we like them already. Disney villains, even the most evil ones, are awesome and everybody loves them. We love them because, very simply, they are so fundamentally bad. And let's be honest, we recognize something in them that's kind of like us. Oh sure, you could make a Jafar movie where you find out how he got his like magical staff, maybe he was a thief himself and he stole it and he worked really hard to get where he is and he wants more and more power because of that and that's why he hates Aladdin because he's a thief and he was a thief so he recognizes himself in Aladdin. You know what, I just destroyed my whole point. I want to see that movie. But forget that. Forget, forget you ever heard what I just said, alright? Uh, my point is, just let Disney villains be villains. Or go the other way, make them even more evil, like when Jafar became a genie. Cruella de Vil's motivation has always been one of narcissism and, well, cruelty. She wants a thing, she can't get it, that pisses her off because she always gets what she wants, so she finds another way to get it. Pretty clear. Why is she evil? Why is she rich? Why is she so mean? Why does she hate dogs? You can make a movie about that and make it interesting for sure, 100%. But should you? Probably not, I would say, because even though you could make an interesting story out of pretty much anything, let's be honest, even a prequel can be interesting. It's hard sometimes, but it can happen. I like the idea of keeping some mystery with those villains so that you can make up your own story for them if you like. And then if you're just told what actually happened in the past, it's not like this big reveal where you're like, oh, this is awesome. It's more like, uh, oh, this clashes with how I saw that, you know? Or it clashes with the original material that the original movies were based on. And then you end up with like tonal shifts and you end up with bad guys becoming good guys. And then you end up with some weird shit. Right off the bat, in this movie, a few things are introduced that muddles all of this. Cruella is presented to us as a kind of darker, multiple personality that young girl Estella has developed. Her mother even encourages her as a child to keep that personality on the down low for school. 
Unfortunately, her mother is poor and in her attempt to get some money from a rich person that she knows, she is killed by, get this, a bunch of Dalmatians. The most ferocious of dog breeds. Now, I know, I know, I know this sounds like a joke. It's not. The movie opens with that, and it is off-putting. However, at that point in the movie, you know that there's more to the story than just Dalmatians bad. Besides, it's not like Estella grows up with this inherent bubbling hate for Dalmatians. Although you would think that's what happens from watching that scene. So even though this was kind of a big meme on Twitter, credit where credit is due, the movie makes it work and ultimately it doesn't feel clumsy. And this for me is the key to understanding this movie. Here's a film that shouldn't work. It shouldn't work. It does a lot of things that will make you scratch your head a little and be like, oh, really? But somehow, I swear, it pulls it off. It does. It pulls it off. Even having Cruella meet her two minions, Jasper and Horace, as a child is a weird decision since, as we all know, she eventually treats them like crap. But in the movie, they flat out address this and make it a part of the story. Having said that, all these little additions to the 101 Dalmatians lore do add up by the end. But let's, let's pull the brakes and rewind a little bit. We'll get back to that later. The film follows Estella, who is now an orphan in London and becomes a thief along with her friends. Since she has an obvious gift for designing outfits, she uses this talent to make disguises for the heists that they plot. Everything goes well until she, as a Disney princess, yearns for more and decides to get a job at prestigious retail store Liberty. Unfortunately, this is about as starting as a starting position can get, as she is basically just dealing with trash and cleaning all day. She eventually proves herself thanks to some nifty merchandising and is hired by big shot fashion designer The Baroness, whose eye for talent is very keen but who may be hiding some deep dark secrets. If you don't want to get spoiled too much, the movie is now available on Disney Plus, so I would suggest you go check it out and then come back to this a little bit later. What follows is a Cruella vs. Baroness fashion war, in which the former basically just trolls the latter over and over again, outdoing her at every turn. And this is where the movie really gets fun. Seeing Cruella going all out on punky outfits and borderline performance art appearances, enjoying every minute of it is a really good time. In fact, this is the point where I was like, you know, this really didn't need to be a Cruella movie. It feels like had this movie just been a cross between Devil Wears Prada and Phantom Thread without anything Disney in it, it would have worked probably even better, seeing as then you wouldn't be distracted with the prequel lighters that we get here. And the film could have allowed its Cruella to actually be cruel. She could have been murdering motherfuckers. This goes back to my original point. This Cruella is very good. Honestly, Emma Stone nails it. She is excellent in the role and frankly, Emma Thompson as the Baroness makes an excellent Cruella as well. In fact, let's be real here. She is the real Cruella of this movie because what this movie lacks for me is a real transformation. By the end of it, you don't really feel like this Cruella is really the Cruella we know. The film, being a Disney movie, restrains itself quite a bit because they realize that obviously glorifying someone who literally wants to skin her friend's baby animals to make a fashion statement isn't the best idea ever. So what they do is reimagine the character completely as this joker light kind of deal where she's a good person with a troubled background who discovers her true self and enjoys being the controversial figure that she always was. And again, like I said, in the movie itself it works, but by the end, you've got the film like rushing to get to the very beginning of 101 Dalmatians, like the original story, so that we can kind of link the two together. But think about it, what you'd end up with is literally a completely different movie. Cruella this time would be like super, super psycho somehow and super young still. I just don't see it happening. We have seen that Cruella will use the press to spread her narrative. And I suspect that the sequel would just do that again, except the journalist character is against her this time. Which would be weird because that would make them the true villain. Or it would all boil down to some kind of misunderstanding or Cruella would like be working with the journalist again to create a fake narrative for some reason. Or Cruella would be forced by another villain to be trying to steal the Dalmatians. Now we would get into all sorts of big changes 
to the Dalmatian story, which starts to get tiring. Very, very tiring. And this is the one thing about this movie that uh, annoys me quite a bit. But to sum up on the movie itself, I think it's good. Much better than I expected it could ever be. Cruella presents a terrific cast, a tit-for-tat fashion war plot that is hugely entertaining, a cool soundtrack, awesome costumes and makeup effects, and the main character you enjoy watching chew up the scenery. There are many minus points as well. The CG, especially on the Dalmatians at the beginning and in the final showdown, does look a bit fake. Some of the characters, like Mark Strong's butler or assistant, it, whatever he was feel a bit underwritten, while others like the dude who runs the Liberty store or the principal at the school are full on caricatures. It's also unclear how the hell any of this is happening, how Jasper and Horace happen to live in this huge loft in London that has lights, how despite Cruella being the only person in the world born with black and white hair parted in the middle, the Baroness doesn't want her at all and doesn't recognize her until like way, way late in the game. How this journalist who barely knew Cruella as a child just goes along with whatever she wants to do, I guess? And of course, the biggest problem of all, the sugar coating and changing of the 101 Dalmatian story, which in a movie about one of the most shamelessly evil Disney characters ever, is a little disappointing. And do we really need, care about, or want to see another 101 Dalmatians movie? Another live action one? Do we care, really? Anyway, all this to say, very noticeable flaws aside, Cruella is an entertaining movie. It looks great, the cast has a ball throughout, it's funny, it's fun, it's probably, and I realize the bar is very low, but it's probably the best of the recent-ish Disney live-action remakes or whatever. It definitely deserves a watch and I am shocked myself to hear myself say that and recommend this movie, but here we are. You never know with the movies, you just never know. Cruella. Oh. Mm. Thank you so much for watching this video. Let me know in the comments what you thought about Cruella. Well, that was a weird face I just made. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to the channel and uh, ring that little bell for notifications. And if there's anything else you want me to review, head on over to my Patreon where you can put in some requests. See you next time.